Hey guys, during our 2017 cross country tour, uh, we were able to uh, record, edit, and publish uh, a daily vlog of our journey. And this is how we did it. During that long trip, we brought along a collection of our own recording equipment. And as a quick review, this is what came along with our journey. I brought the following equipment, a Canon G7X Mark II, a GoPro Hero 4 Silver, the Zoom H1 recorder, and a 2016 Apple MacBook Air. Here's Sang's equipment, the Panasonic Lumix GH3, the DJI Osmo Gimbal, and his iPhone 7. Here are some sample footage of what we took on the trip. The Canon G7X shot all my vlog style clips where I am talking to the camera either on the bike or off the bike. My GoPro Hero 4 was used to shoot all the action shots from my helmet and chest mount. I also used it when the weather got wet as I brought along a waterproof case. The shots can be nausea inducing, but gives you a good perspective of what was happening. This camera was also used for several time lapses. Anytime you see fisheye footage, it's from this camera. Sang's DJI Osmo was the primary camera he used to capture all the buttery smooth footage on and off the bike. Scenes where we speed up and show the landscape was captured by this camera. We seem to get positive feedback from you guys about this camera footage. This camera was great for dry conditions, but when the weather got wet, we had to put it away. It was also prone to overheating as the weather got warmer. The Panasonic Lumix GH3 was only used once on our trip. Considering how much space it took and how little it was used, this is one camera that could have stayed home. To offset the weather sensitivity of the DJI Osmo, Sang used his iPhone to capture some footage on the go. I also had the Zoom H1 to record voiceovers for some videos. This proved to be trickier to manage as the recorder was very sensitive to noise and I needed to find an optimal condition for a recording session. You usually don't think about the accessories that you need to bring uh, when you first select your equipment, but that's something that needs to be seriously considered. Here are some things that we actually had to bring because of our equipment selection. The G7X needed an extra battery, charger, and extra SD card. The GoPro needed two extra batteries, charger, and an adapter for the memory card, multiple cases for different scenarios, the DJI Osmo needed two extra batteries, charger, and a bike mount. We also carried a mini tripod for both camera and audio recorder. Most of our equipment are found in our handlebar bags or nearby bags. As you can see, we've been carrying a lot of equipment on our three month journey across the country. And after everything is recorded every day, we need to offload it to a storage device. For that, I had my Samsung SSD 500 gigabyte drive and Sang's 500 gigabyte Western Digital hard drive for temporary storage and used for rendering my movie files. We later added a high performance one terabyte hard drive for backup and archiving on the road. These drives worked well managing projects that was in the works and projects that needed to be saved. Once the footage and all audio files are downloaded, I would fire up iMovie on my MacBook Air. But one quick thing about the MacBook Air. I picked this machine over the MacBook Pro is because of several reasons. First, it's a very compact laptop which stowed away in my panniers nicely. Second, it came with a built-in SD card reader. I didn't want to carry extra equipment to read my memory cards. Lastly, we record in 1080p and not 4K. So I didn't need the extra processing power from the new MacBook Pro. We will create a new project and import all video footage and audio voiceover for today. So to do that is we open up iMovie here, click on projects up here, and then create new, new movie. And click on import. And then from here, we select the folder we want to import the, the movies from. Go right here, just kind of import something. And then they'll be usable. Dragged over here. There you go. 
The hardest part of video production is picking the right music. Um, it needed to capture the right mood and setting of the shots we took within the days. So in order to do that, we actually had a music subscription that we were uh, using on the road. But since then, we've decided to go for royalty-free uh, music options. I usually find my music on SoundCloud using a royalty-free search. So the way you do that, um, you just kind of select the type of music you want here, by typing in like, for example, folk music. And then under tracks here, you want to go to, instead of to listen to, you want to go to, to modify commercially or to use commercially. So I'm going to go to, to use commercially. And then you can ba basically sample all sorts of tracks here. Like this, for example. And then if you wanted to know how to download, some of these guys will have uh, descriptions on how to download within their uh, show more description page and I'll tell you how to use it uh, commercially or how to use it uh, for certain reasons um, you can basically uh, read this and download what you need the other way is there is SoundCloud downloaders that you can use which is another website where you can copy and paste the SoundCloud URL and grab the audio file for that um, I also have another way that I uh, get music and it's through this channel called Audio Library on YouTube. And Audio Library has a lot of awesome um, different kind of music genres, different type of like uh, really ambient type of music that I, I enjoy that I really like. So this is one of my favorite ones that I've used in my blogs. So from here you basically have um, ways to kind of download it using their instructions here or you can copy and paste their licensing um, uh, actually that's what you should be doing when you're uh, giving them credit on your videos so you should copy and paste these but there's ways instructions on how to download it so which is pretty darn cool so um, yep audio library is one of them and lastly, I actually still uh, give money to artists uh, who I use a lot of their songs repeatedly. Uh, and if they're good music, I basically try to uh, support them and, and have been you know, subscribing to their uh, Patreon page and uh, donating like a dollar or two dollars every month for them to continue to create their, their music for us to use, so I support that. I would select one or two tracks that would be used in my videos and set that as the background music. I usually go through and arrange my videos in the following way. Number one, I introduce a clip of when and where we are. Um, so essentially like maybe like this one, this clip here is like a general overview of what the day was. I'm using this for uh, one of my Yep, one of those intro clips. And then, um, yeah, it's normally filmed, uh, you know, where I am talking to the camera with my G7X and what the plan is for today. So I may actually cut it short by moving these around, or uh, the other option is hitting Control D to break it and deleting the beginning. So, as an example. Then I'll show some uh, writing footage of the day, uh, which was filmed by the GoPro or um, the DJI, DJI Osmo. So this would be like a good candidate for it, one of these. Actually, it's still loading. Um, bear with me. It takes its time. So we'll throw in this writing footage here. And what I'll do is, nope, oh, it's kind of skipping, but what I'll do is I'll even uh, mute the sound because sometimes I might not, I might not want, um, you know, road noises like cars or even like loud noises that um, that can interrupt the mood of the, the film um, in iMovie. Let me zoom out so you guys can see in retrospect what that means. Um, uh, so, 
The music is then uh, introduced here as well. Uh, what I do is within my audio, there's an iTunes where I have to import a couple of songs and you know, I would sample it here. I would throw it in the audio track down here, which is like the soundtrack for the whole, the entire uh, video. But this one's about two minutes. And so you can play around with this and figure out where you want to introduce it. And, um, you know, one of the things I love doing is making uh, jump cuts to match the beat of the song. So if there's like a thud thud, I could change each of the scenes to match it. So you may have noticed it using by, from some of my other videos, I might change the scenery or change the actual video clips so that we can uh, capture a much more, you know, different feel of things. So you can actually time it so that it it's kind of fun in, in a way. Uh, and then if there's any other speaking points, I would actually uh, fade in and fade out voiceover. And so what you, the way you would do that is you can mark it by using, um, typing the word press R and dragging out like a section you want to fade. You want to fade the sound away or in. I mean, you could do this. You you would normally you would normally do this to um, the music side of things. So, like, say I'm talking here, I really want to cut the music down really low here. You just kind of drag it down and then lower the, the volume here, and then you can adjust the way this is uh, the volume raises. So you can go and review it, and so your voice. Your voice in the video footage can be uh, can go ahead and talk, and then it kind of raises up as the scene becomes non-talking. You know, um, and also I mentioned that like to break up your clips, Control B, if you're, Command B, and Delete. And mainly, I mean that's the general gist of things. I also introduce uh, from time to time time lapses so I don't think I have time lapses here but you can actually make your own time lapse if you recorded some like if you were recording something that you're doing um, for example like if there was a writing scene which I think I, I'll put right here and you can even do like a manual slowdown of, the, of, the, of this ride by clicking on this thing here speed and go slow and just play around with like how many percent slow you want to go. And so let's go 50% on this guy here. After this cut, it'll go into this scene where it's like super slow, half 50%. That's as slow as it can get. And a lot of it is for dramatic effects. So when you speed up and speed down, it kind of changes the mood of the movie and kind of lets you kind of see the details, the intimacy of a, of a shot. Or if you're doing it fast, if you want to kind of speed through and show the scenery. Uh, I've played around with both of those. Um, and then uh, the movie would actually, or the video would actually conclude with me dropping in what I call a uh, conclusion page. Uh, that's essentially a title page where I'll throw in you know, centered, and I kind of explain like where from from where to what to here or something, and then how many miles, like you know, for the day, and um, what's the elevation. So I get all this information, you know, through my Strava that I that I um, use for my videos. So um, yeah, it's basically a bumper, just kind of tell people the the stats for the day and um, and then even on top of that maybe a video of me asking people to subscribe and so you've seen it at the end of most of my videos to subscribe and to fit, to like our video and all that stuff and share and uh, that's essentially how most of these things are built and that's all what we do to produce videos on the road 
So this formula gets repeated on a daily basis so I know what I would be capturing during the day and not really worry about how to um, put the videos together. Of course, it can get repetitive, so I would change it up a little bit. Uh, for example, in my vlog number 58 between Van Horn and Fort Davis, Texas, I documented every 10 miles because that was like a really long day. And that kind of changed up the feel of the video. For your convenience, all our camera and equipment is mentioned below in the descriptions if you are interested in picking something up for yourself. Um, and as usual, make sure you subscribe or like this video for more bike touring information. And until next time, make sure you get out there and discover your ride.